Start streaming. Oh my gosh, I haven't done a stream in as long as I can remember. Today, though, it's Cyber Monday, and I wanted to let everybody know that we are doing a great big sale on data recovery. There's This is my favorite time of year because there's there is nothing better during the month of December to be able to call people and say, hey, guess what? We recovered the data from your phone. It's, it's just the greatest gift. We were just did our first away course. We Mark and I went to the uh, Department of Homeland Security, which was really fun. And while we were down there, they those guys actually had all this closet full of phones that were their personal devices over the years that had they had collected when they died. And so there was <laughs> it was really fun. We ended up recovering the data for all of these guys that work there. And it was just so fun because they all got to leave going, I'm going to give this to my wife for Christmas. And it just inspired me to make it as cheap as possible for you to get your data recovered. So if you've been sitting on some phone, that you're like, I don't know, you know, we are doing 50% off all of those expensive phones, the iPhone 10, 11, 12, those are all half off. As long as you get your phone to us postmarked by December 24th, you can find out all the details on iPadRehab.com. Click over to our blog. Gene wrote up a little, uh, little thing on how to get started and what the code is and where to enter the code. It's got to be for new jobs and you can read all about it over there. I also clicked over to the YouTube community tab and put a post up there so you can see this little logo. I'm super excited about this. I love recovering data at Christmas time. It's my favorite thing to do. So send us all these jobs. All right, now this particular, uh, there's two phones here that, that made me think, man, I, I gotta squeeze in time for a live stream today. I've gotta, I gotta go take a kid to the doctors at three, but I gotta, I gotta talk about these two phones because they're a little bit related. What they're <laughs> related by is total, total ca catastrophic damage. Look at this. This, look at this. I don't know that I have seen a phone in worse shape than there is not much left of this. This is an iPhone 12. Look at this. This is pretty much as bad as it can get. This is probably the luckiest data recovery ever. So this phone came to us all the way from Italy and I'll read you the note. Let me make sure this is working though. I'll read you the note. And the note says, Marco says, my iPhone 12 128 gig had an accident. Yes, it did, Marco. I can, I can see that. You're right. Fell into an industrial machine. Marco, what, are you, what, what happened? I got to know the details. Fell into an industrial machine. The screen was disintegrated. Now, there's not even a screen there. There's no more screen. Um, the frame as well. The battery was punctured. Look at that. Isn't it amazing that this whole thing just didn't catch on fire? and just turn into charcoal. Uh, the motherboard was the only thing that remained. My request, I want to recover data. I only have an old backup. I want to take it to a new phone. Uh, heart, thanks in advance. Heartfelt greetings from Italy. All right, Marco. Well, it's good news for you. This phone is recovered. Now this one, I wanted to, to just show you. This is kind of the, the far worst case scenario. And we do take uh we do just say yeah there's not much we can do through this board when a phone is in this this is like a lawnmower phone so how do you recover data from a phone like this and the there's really when it's that bad the only way to do it is to harvest the data containing chips off of the logic board and transfer it to a receiver board now let me show you what i mean so let's look at this board so we've taken off this is one of the cases that we did that week at, at Homeland Security. So we took off these chips just to show them, you know, what, what can be done. And let me show you under the microscope what it looks like. This one was so <laughs> lucky because there is a physical crack that is running at the, uh, right across the a chip that's adjacent to the EEPROM, which is one of the required chips. All right, so you can see on this board that the NAND, this is the hard drive of the iPhone, and the NAND has been harvested, taken off with all of its information, reballed, and moved over to a working receiver board. What else? Over here is 
the CPU. So you can see the footprint here where the CPU used to be and the CPU has been harvested and reballed and moved over to the receiver board. Now this is a really challenging job, which is why I always try to fix a phone on the native board before just saying, oh, let's just take off the CPU because this CPU is all completely covered in underfill. See this black stuff here? There is a super glue underfill that is buried under the chip. So you have to harvest the chip and clean all that off without damaging the delicate bottom side of the CPU. Plus on the top side is a chip on a chip. The RAM is soldered to the top of the CPU. So it makes it a really challenging job. So it's never your go-to strategy. It's always the strategy of last resort. And then here's the last chip here, right here. There used to be a little guy. This little dude, the EEPROM is just as important as the CPU itself and the NAND. So this little tiny chip that kind of has a secret passcode, he's got a, he's got to be there. And what was really wild about this phone in particular, let me see if I can make it a little bit more clear, is that there was a physical crack running through this adjacent chip. So it had been crushed up in the shredder or whatever the industrial machine was, but that crack didn't actually hit. It went all the way here and then stopped. Isn't that crazy? So, so lucky. So once we take off those chips, then we can move them over to a receiver. And let me show you what that looks like. Cause I don't know that we've, this is a super boring job. I think there's only like one or two videos buried on the channel, um, where we go, go through that. Cause it's not, you know, not that entertaining to watch, but here it is. Here is the receiver board and it is put together in an eye socket, which is, you know, one of the things that we sell in the store. So here is Marco's top board and his important chips are uh, are moved over here to this receiver board. Let's see if we can take it apart. All right, here's the receiver board. Look, there is his NAND. Here is his CPU and his EEPROM and they are moved over to what was somebody else's perfectly working phone. So this was a known good receiver board and Marco's bottom board is also in really terrible shape. So there's some, it was missing like basically all of these pads. Interposer's all torn up, so it's a disaster. The good news is that for data recovery, you can use a known good, uh, somebody else's bottom board. It doesn't have to be the native bottom board. So we're gonna put together Marco's top chips on the receiver board on the known good bottom board. We're gonna put it together in this little springy jig called the eye socket and plug this in. So the other phone that I'm gonna show you after we boot up Marco's was from a roller coaster. So huge catastrophic day to day where back to back iPhone 12s, they, they can take a, lot of, take a lot of abuse, but they cannot survive a trip through an industrial shredder, industrial machine, and they can't survive a ride off of a roller coaster. All right. What has really become the hardest thing for me these days is connecting the damn connectors. I think that I would rather do um, <laughs> take off that CPU than try to connect the screen. That's what it has come to here at age 48. Oh man. So I'm so excited about this data recovery special. I'm also excited about our travel course. It went really, really well, and it was super fun to just go to a new place. So now we're very gung-ho. If your organization wants to have uh, iPad rehab, practical board repair come to you, give us a call. You know, if you get together enough people and you have all the equipment, then we can come on out. It was really fun. Okay, so now Marco's chips are ready to go. And let's see if it will boot up. So I'm gonna prompt it to boot by plugging it in and let's see what happens. Ooh, there's an Apple logo. And let's see, where's Marco's thing? There he is. Marco, if you see this video, comment and tell us the details what happened to your phone. So here it is, boot it up. 
and he's got his passcode marco gave us permission to record for youtube and there you go guys path to data there you go and now we'll be able to recover all of that information so at the end of the day you really only need the cpu to be intact and functional plus its ram plus the nand plus the eprom and as long as that's working you can recover data and this is a great example of that now let's look at a i think more interesting case these cpu transfers tend to be i don't know they're just they're just like work so they're specialized but they're a little bit boring. All right, so let's move over those parts and pieces. And actually, I'm gonna hand this one off to Brad. Actually, I might need this back, so we'll, we'll hang on to that. All right, Marco, good news coming up for you. Next case. I wanted to do a video on this one because it's really interesting. This is a phone that fell off of a roller coaster. Now it has like a really unfortunate bend. That's a pretty severe, that's bad. You don't want it to look like that. Now we could and maybe we will end up having to do another CPU NAND transfer on this guy, but we're always gonna try to see, maybe we don't need to, maybe there's something that we can fix. So when we're teaching our micro soldering course, we're always kind of saying the first tool that you're going to use is diode mode. You know, you're going to diode mode all the time. But I wanted this video to be about what happens when you're trying to fix a device beyond diode mode. When there's nothing short and nothing open in diode mode, then what do you do? And that's why I like this video. So um, I just showed you the Marco phone because it was just sitting right here. And I thought it was really cool. And I know that people are going to ask on a video like this, hey, Jessa, why don't you just transfer the chips? You can. It's just not my first choice. Okay. So now let's talk about Jordan's phone. So Jordan says, phone fell out of my pocket while on a roller coaster and my photos weren't backed up. All right, Jordan, let's see if we can get your photos out of your roller coaster phone. That's really unfortunate. I really want to know what roller coaster it was, though, because it says Jordan is from New York, which is the old home state. Okay, so when I haven't even taken the board out of this frame yet, because I'm not going to do that unless I need to. The first thing that I did with Jordan's phone is I plugged it in to the good old DC power supply. And guess what? On DC power supply, despite this god awful bend, on DC power supply, Jordan's phone appears to show normal boot up sequence from a current consumption pattern. So when I tell it to boot up, it goes up and down, up and down, looks like it has a heartbeat, it looks alive, it looks like the brain is working, but there's nothing on the screen. So let's go ahead and plug in that same screen that we just used, which we'll get to go to the fun show called Jessa has to plug in connectors on live stream. Everyone's least favorite. All right, we'll plug in them in. We'll plug in both. Let's flip that around. Let me see if I can catch up with chat while I'm struggling with these things. Hey guys, hello from Belgium. Does the 12 series need any flex to not reboot other than dock flex? That is a great question. And I have made an entire blog entry, which I believe is live now on sensor problems and how to figure that stuff out. That is actually, a, I, I want to make an edited video to talk to you guys about all of those three minute reboot loops. So we're sending out a newsletter today, actually. So we are going to send out a newsletter to help you guys understand all of those, how to tell what the phone needs in order to not reboot. And the answer is it depends and it changes and it changes via different versions of iOS. So there's no like easy straight answer. So go check out iPadRehab.com and check out our sensor blog article. I think you'll like that. Okay. So when I plug in the screen here, let's plug up DC power supply. Oh, the squid situation continues to be problematic as we head into the very end of 
2022. And my favorite squid is going to be this one. It works at least, but it doesn't go up to 13. This is the one that is for sale at iPad Rehab Supply right now. Okay, so I plug in the squid and I prompt to boot, prompt, prompt, prompt. And I can see on my DC power, that thing looks like it's booting. Maybe it's not, possibly not, but it should definitely be making at least an Apple logo. When I see current consumption, 200, 300, now it's up to 700, 800 milliamps, and then kind of coming back down, that should be normal. But there's absolutely nothing on this screen that we just saw boot up on Marker's phone, so we know it's known good. So we're gonna call this problem no image. Booting, we think so, but no image. Why does it have no image, even though we've got this known good screen? So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect DC power, disconnect this and the f what what are we going to do next what do we do when we have a phone that turns on but it has no image so we're not going to be able to type in the passcode and get jordan's roller coaster pictures off unless we can get it to have image so what can we do step number one is diode mode the connector so let's see happy to be here first time catching you live well i'm glad you're watching and I'm glad that you know that we should diode mode the connector, right? Everybody knows diode mode the connector. And I did that. I diode mode the connector and I even compared it to this guy right here, my iPhone 12 known good, which is, is super important to have. You got to have known good boards or else you don't really know whether or not a diode mode reading that's a little bit off. Is it okay or not? So the known good boards are another thing that we've added to iPad Rehab Supply. So we found a source of these iCloud lock boards and you can pick one up over at our supply store. So I compared it to my known good diode mode, the connector for where you plug in the screen, right? So just, you know, plugged it in, measure. And I didn't find any differences. So I didn't find any open circuit like I was hoping because if there was an open, we could go figure out where is it open and close the open. And I didn't find any short circuits that we could cure the short with a thermal camera and figure out why is it short. None of that. So what do you do when diode mode lets you down beyond diode mode? That's the topic of today. And the answer to that is that your next step is that you have to figure out what line is problematic from a voltage perspective. So it's possible that you can have a, you know, a circuit that's not short and it's not open, but there's just the wrong or no voltage on it. And why would that be? That's because the chip that's generating that voltage is not doing its job. So at school, we call that the guy upstairs not doing its job. So for a display problem for iPhone 12, who is the guy upstairs? What chip is responsible for making image voltages? Now, like every system, there's power for the system and then there's information for the system. So information from image is probably going to come directly from the CPU. And in Jordan's roller coaster phone, if there is a problem with image, it's going to be the CPU itself or the connection of the CPU to the board. And that's going to mean it's going to have to go for CPU transfer service. But hopefully that's not the case. Uh, also because CPU transfer service is more expensive. So we're going to try and make sure that this phone really needs it before we just kind of randomly decide to do that. Because if anything happens to the CPU, then you're going to lose your path to data. You can't like recover from damage to the CPU or the NAND or the EEPROM especially. All right. So what is power though for this system? Where, what can we, how can we figure this out? And at Practical Board Repair School, one of my strategies is always looking at a model system. So our model system is the iPhone 6. So even though the iPhone 6 is quite old compared to the iPhone 12, we're finding that a lot of times these systems that are kind of rudimentary in the older phones and then become fancy in the newer phones, if you go back to those older phones and you can kind of really understand them without all the bells and whistles of the new phones, then you can kind of apply those same concepts up the chain. Let's give it a try, all right? So let's go see, what do we know about power for image in the model system in the iPhone 6? 
So we are gonna open up the schematic for the iPhone 6, at least in theory, if I can find it on my on my uh, broadcaster thing. Oh, where would I have put that? What would I have called it? Is it this? No. All right. Delay of game. What would I have called it? I don't know. I'll have to add that source again. Add window. And let's call it PDF. And create new. And there it is. And let's drag it over here. And let's embiggen it. Okay, so what are we talking about? We are talking about the chip in the iPhone 6 that produces image, and that chip is named Chestnut. So let's talk a little bit about how, how Chestnut works. Let me see if I can move this around a little bit. Let's move this down. Let's move that down there. All right, Chestnut. So Chestnut is as we look at it, I see a lot of power lines. So it is a power producing chip, power for image. And if we drill down and we kind of look at what's the input and what's the output and where's the control, we can kind of guess. I bet you that right there, D1, voltage in, that's gotta be the input. And what is that? Main power rail, VCC main. Okay, so VCC main plugs into this chip here at voltage in, but it also goes through L1519. L1519 is Uncle Henry, that's a coil. And coils either will buck convert or reduce a voltage down, or they will act with a chip to boost a voltage up. So either buck conversion or boost in these phones. And in this case, this is a boost coil where it's boosting VCC main, that three or four volts, up to a higher voltage, which is that high power for the display. And we can see that that's what's happening here at Chestnut. That's what Chestnut does. So it's switching, SW switching, 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 switching that coil voltage to ground, which through magic will bloom out over here on this side of the chip, these higher output voltages. So we can see over here, we have PP six volts for LCM. So the six volt line, which really doesn't go anywhere, but that six volt line is stable, steady six volts, and it is used to then create or to sort of slightly carve down the actual screen voltages. And here they are, PN 5V7, PP 5V7, PP 5V7 Sage, LCM 5V1 Grape. So these are our power lines for touch in the iPhone 6 and for the actual image. And we know that because if you were to you know, follow this line out to the connector and just kind of pick that pin out of the connector, then you would lose image. So we know that this is power for image. And we know that for sure in the iPhone 6 where everything is really well studied. So now we have to kind of go on a hunt and say, well, we don't know much about the iPhone 12 and there's not a lot of information out there. So we're gonna just have to work with ZXW and see, can we figure out where might the equivalent chestnut of the 12 be and see if we can find any connection with this pretty severe roller coaster damage. And I don't know, maybe we can, maybe we can't. So let's see if we can jump in on ZXW. So now I gotta find where is the XW on my info? Here it is. And now we're at the iPhone 12 ZXW. So now here is the iPhone 12 display connector. It's this guy right here. And remember, we already did diode mode and we did not find anything short or open. So for example, here on PP4V6 display, 0.523 on the known good, is also 0.523 here on Jordan's board. So there's nothing short or open on any of these lines that are related to display. Now, let's think about that PP4V6. Does that sound similar or would, would you guess that this guy is a chestnut equivalent output? Remember the chestnut outputs in the iPhone 6? PP5V7. PP4V6, that's a match, isn't it? It's like almost the same. It's power, it's 
going to the display connector. I bet you if we follow this guy back, we'll find our way to some kind of a chip that's going to be the chestnut of the iPhone 12. Maybe the maybe the uh, the hazelnut of the iPhone 12. Who knows? You know what I actually did over Thanksgiving? I actually, this is no joke, I roasted chestnuts on an open fire. And they were pretty gross. And they were a little bit charred up, so I don't recommend it. But it was... It was a fun experience. So chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Let's see. Now let's look at some of these other lines. What do you think this is? M-I-P-I-A-P to display. That sounds like data. That sounds like data. And it's just going to go back to the CPU. So it doesn't help us fix Jordan's phone. We're looking for lines that are going to lead us to power, a place where we might actually be able to intervene. Maybe this one, PP1VX display. PP1V2S2, PP3VO display, that could be a good one. These are ones where we can actually get out our multimeter and voltage test and see which one of these is low. And if we find one that's low, then we can go track it down to the source. All right, so let's just click around. Let's follow this and see where does it go. PP4V6 display. And let's see, does it go to any kind of a chip? All right, it looks like there's an array of test points here. That's not a huge help. And let's look around, let's look around. Let's flip the board and see where does it go. Ah, so on this side of the board, PP4V6 goes to a chip, U9100. So U9100, let's see if the footprint of U9100 is similar to the footprint of chestnut in the iPhone 6. So back at the iPhone 6, let's look at that for a second. Where's my schematic? Oh, I don't know, I lost it. Boo! Oh, here it is, PDF, yeah. So let's look at the schematic for the iPhone 6. Now let's look at the chip, chestnut. In the 6, U1501 is the display power chip, chestnut. And look at those little pads or connections under it. They are for lines like AP to I2C clock, AP to I2C data, LCM to chestnut power enable, reset, ADC MUX, and then HVLDO, which leads to all of these power lines. PP5V1, PP5V7, PP5V7, PN5V7, and PP6VO. And then it goes out to a little capacitor that goes right back into the chip, which I call chestnut's nut, C1554. Now, just kind of keep that fresh in mind. LCM boost, C pump, all of these words. Let's go on a hunt now and see if there's any matches to the chip that we think might be hazelnut, you know, the chestnut of the iPhone 12. So let's go back to ZXW and look for this same match. We're gonna keep those words in the front of our mind. We're not gonna forget them. And now we're gonna go back to ZXW. Come on, ZXW, light up. There it is, ZXW. Man, the multitasking on this is getting harder with, with, with age for sure. All right, let's see what's in here. All right, so we've got something called um, IODP mic. Mm, I don't know. Uh, VDD main, VDD main, LX, D, PMIC, V out, another V out, V out, PN var display, V S S E L, PN var display, V S S E L. Let's keep looking around. Display panic 1v8, PP 4v6, display V out enable 1v8. PMU from display, more VDD main. Here's another one. This one was really similar. GPIO, PMU to display reset L 1V8. That's like almost exactly the same. So it looks like there's a bunch of these lines that are called LXD PMIC V out 2B or V out A or whatever the other ones were, V out 2A. So it looks like this chip has outputs that don't carry over that same PP5V7, PN5V7. Let's see if we can figure out where do these outputs go. Let's just click one of them and see this chip U91. Uh, where would its 
coil be, right? Because in order for a boost chip to take main and to create boost outputs, it's got to have some kind of a coil. So let's go on a hunt and see where do these outputs go and see if we can get a hint. Ah, so now we've got the hazelnut chip, if you will, is sending one of its outputs over here to this coil, L9120. All right, let's go back and click on another one of these that say V out. Where's the where's one of the V outs? Here's another one. V out one. Where does V out one go? And V out one goes over to another coil, L9110. And let's click on the other side of this coil, VCC main. All right, so VDD main goes through this coil to the chip. That's really, really similar to the way chestnut works. Remember how chestnut has a coil where main is on one side and the chip is on the other. So it does seem like this chip, U9100, is acting like the chestnut of the iPhone 12. Why are we talking about this? The point that I'm trying to make here is that by when, when diode mode lets us down, things get complex, right? So if we don't find, you know, diode mode is easy, right? Diode mode short, diode mode open, fix the problem. But what happens when the system's not working and diode mode is not giving you any clues? Then you have to dig a little bit deeper. And one of our strategies for digging deeper is to go to an old phone and then try to make inferences between the new phones where there's less information and the old phones where everything is really well described. All right, so now what could be wrong with Jordan's phone? Maybe Chestnut is cracked. Maybe Chestnut is ice cubed off the board. Maybe one of these coils that is um, required for the chestnut hazelnut chip to work. Maybe one of those coils is ice cubed off the board. And that's pretty common. We see that in that, uh, the iPad 10 and a half inch where they just sort of pop those coils off. So let's just go try to put our eyeballs on these things and just see if we can find a connection between Jordan's roller coaster phone and the problem. All right. Um, Okay, so let's see what's going on in chat. Don't forget to lick the stream. Yes, please lick the stream. Okay, is it a common fault, the coil? Sure, all right. Let's take a look now and see on Jordan's phone if any of this means anything. All right, so where are those coils? We're gonna spin this around to look just like ZXW and ZXW, actually I think ZXW was like this. I already forgot, let's see. ZXW was, yeah, the coils were at the bottom. Is that how it looks for you guys? Nope, coils were at the bottom. There we go. All right, so here is the display connector and chestnut equivalent is on the inside of the board. So we have to take the board out, desolder it in order to look at chestnut, which we might have to do. Um, but on the top side of the board, are, is the little uh, coils, which are right here underneath the shield. And this is why I picked this case, because look at that. The coils right there are right where the bend is, right? See that? There's like this bend in the board is kind of right, right in this area, a little bit to the side. And you can look at this, this shield. It's looks like look how it's all kind of bent in something is up with that and i took a peek under there and i'll show you what does it look like so let's grab the microscope and let's go take a peek at those coils together so let's get rid of the hand cam and now we're going to take a peek together what do we have when we look under there so here it is see how that's really that has like somebody took a hammer to it. Look at that, that's really bad. All right, now the way I get these things off is by using, I don't use heat to take off these weird kind of soldered on all four sort of cap type shields, cans, I guess, like this one. When I need to take one of those off, what I'll do is I will find the joints and just kind of gently press gently press to weaken all of those and then prop it off and this one look at that it's already 
it's already really really beat up I bet you that this is gonna be a problem all right so let's weaken these joints oh my gosh look at that that is barely hanging on there and look wow look at that those coils are not they're just like hanging out but they are they are not doing their job look at that look at the feet they have been knocked off entirely that one also this one this one's still on there but just on one side and that one might be okay pretty cool huh so now we know that we we might have bigger fish to fry i don't know but in the very least we know we for sure cannot make those outputs without those coils so what is the next step now we have to replace them all right so we're going to replace where can i get schematics from i've downloaded zxw but i can't find the schematics well that's that's the whole point right there aren't schematics which is why we're having to use all of this inference and magic and guessing right so we we have schematics for the iphone 6 which are pretty readily available you should be able to you know find those with a by you know searching google but for more modern devices a lot of times those schematics never fall off a truck from china and so we have to learn how to work without the schematic like we're doing right now right we don't have a schematic for the iphone 12 and there may be one i think i've seen maybe an rf one for just the bottom board or something i'm not really sure but a lot of times you don't really truly need the schematic all right let's turn on i'm still just getting we're getting back from that travel course and my station is in in pieces everywhere all right so when these coils come off just like that they leave their little foot uh, <laughs> on there they're just so sad so you can just kind of take that off with a little bit of thermal paste what does that mean 300 huh oh shit it's three o'clock well, well Brad you gotta take over okay <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is bad. I told Bailey that I would take him to the doctor. All right, I gotta, let's speed it up. All right, let me see if I can grab some coils, replace these really quick without even taking the board out. And that'll have to be our stopping point one way or the other. Okay. The technical streams are just kind of I don't I don't know what to do with them anymore. Like they're just they have so much dead air. I was thinking as we kind of head into the new year of maybe even starting a second YouTube channel on my other passion, which is DIY nutritional biochemistry. Who likes that, right? So kind of a fitness channel. I would love to see, to connect with other people that like to read read science. I was thinking about doing a channel that was um, just translating scientific journal articles into stuff people, regular people can understand. I think that'd be cool. There's just so much mi misinformation out there in the diet and nutrition space. All right, let's see. How are my puffy pillows doing? All right, now this one, I think I'm gonna just try to wiggle it off because I think he, there's no saving him. Look at that, you can see the actual coil of wire. Look at that, the little, the little end of the coil is coming out it's super cool all right now let's see all right pk hanzo says yes for yes for what yes for yes it would be cool to do a let's learn how to 
translate scientific literature into stuff that makes sense for regular people. I think that would be cool. I have read just tons and tons of primary literature on fasting science and all of the, you know, carbohydrate insulin stuff. And I was thinking of like, I was out on a run today and I was thinking of a, a cool sciency like visual aid on why it is that you get on the scale on January 1st and you weigh whatever and then you get on the scale on January 2nd and it's three pounds different like what gives why why does that happen and kind of talk about carbohydrates acting like a sponge in your body that changes your water balance which is something that nobody really thinks about I don't know, kind of a pet idea. I'd love to have time for it. All right. Let's see if we can get some new, fresh, new, lovely coils on here. Now, it's always really challenging to solder on one of these layer boards without separating the board. So that we're going to do anyway. That one really kind of is not as happy to come off as the other guys were. All right, puffy pillow, puffy pillow, puffy pillow. And I'm not sure about that one there, but we'll say close enough. All right, now if it wasn't 3 o'clock and I had already promised to take a kid to the doctor, I would diode mode to make sure that these pads actually are connected to where they're supposed to. But I'm in a hurry, so I'm not going to. All right, let's grab my known good. And remember, if you don't have a known good, you can just use one that, that somebody donates or that you find on the side of the road, or Jessa, we can't see. Crime scene is out of frame. Oh no. All right, let me, let me pull that back down. All right. Now I can see what you can see. I have a choice. I can either see what you can see or I can see chat, but I can't see both at the same time. All right, yeah, now you can see. All right, so this is my known good, which I literally got from iPad Rehab Supply by walking up to <laughs> the supply store and grabbing one. It has really been nice to have that resource. Okay, so now this one's going to be more of a challenge because, oh no, I just damaged that coil, but that's the one that doesn't matter, so. Oh, maybe I didn't. All right, so just pop that little sucker off just like that. Okay, now I'm going to try and harvest these guys and just move them over. So let's see if we can do that on speed mode, and then, then we'll see whether or not Jordan's phone still has bigger fish to fry and ultimately see if we can get him recovered without having to do a CPU transfer. All right, I need a hot air nozzle. Yay, here it is. Awesome. And I need some hot air. I need some hot air that's hotter than 250 degrees. All right, so let's take this guy first. You can really see that the solder that's holding that coil on and the solder that's holding that shield on is the exact same stuff, which is why those shields don't come off nice and easy like they do on every other device. I really, really shouldn't solder on a flex, but...
All right. These need a little bit puffier of a pillow. Now let's go for number two. Now number three. And if we were smart, we would replace that fourth one too, but not for this first pass. Okay, so now we've got those guys that are on there and I'm out of time, but let's just see whether or not that was enough. I'm not very well versed in phones, mostly Nvidia graphics cards. If one doesn't have those ferrite filters in hand, surely they can be bypassed with a blob for short term. No, not with the blob for short term because they will not be able to make their voltage with a blob, right? So you're gonna have to have if you just needed a simple connection, sure, but you need function of those coils. So you can't blob over a coil. Now you could probably guess their value just by looking up and seeing similar coils from similar chips in older phones. And then you could just, you know, take one of those. All right, luckily I didn't burn up my charge port, which is a, which is a huge win. It's pretty hot, but I don't have much time because it is 3.11 and I need to get out of here. All right, which one of these? This was the known good screen. So let's go ahead and click over to the hand cam. Uh, hand cam, there you go. All right, so we'll get rid of our microscope and now we will see whether or not it makes any difference here on Jordan's phone to have replaced those, those coils. And if not, then we would take the board out, separate it, and put our eyes on Hazelnut. I think I should be allowed to name that guy. I'm gonna call him Hazelnut from now on after the creamer. All right. There is in the iPhone 10 a similar chip called Acorn. So I think it's safe to say that they would have continued on with the nut theme all right i'm going to go to dc power it'd be cool to see an image but if not i th hopefully you guys have uh can see the point when diode mode doesn't work out then voltage testing and trying to understand your system by looking back at older devices and making inferences from the older device to the new all right moment of truth Prompt, prompt, prompt to boot. I don't see any image, but it still looks like it's booting. All right, so what do we need to do here? I'm out of time, but hey, ha, hey, never mind. We do have image. All right, I was gonna say, what do we need to do here? Get out our multimeter and voltage test here in this connector. Yay! Roller coaster phone is intact. That's awesome. It's awesome. Well, there you go. That's how you fix a phone. 
uh, that fell off a roller coaster. I, I love the point that you don't always have to just go for CPU swap row. You know, it's a, it's a last ditch resort once you've already ruled out stuff. And it's, it doesn't take a long time to do that, right? So you can diode mode the connector. If you find a shorter open, you can clear that. You can voltage test. You can research your system comparing to an old phone. Right? All of this stuff, we will talk to you until you're sick of it at Practical Board Repair School. So if you haven't come out to spend a week with us, it's super, super fun. And I highly recommend it. You can go to iPadRehab.com and click on our training courses. And I wanted to do this video today so that I could show you about our great big sale. I love bringing back people's memories for Christmas. It's the best Christmas gift. So if you've been sitting on a phone that you're like, I don't know if I really care about these last 10 pictures or not, 50% off on our data recovery. You can go find the details at iPadRehab.com. There's a community article. I think it's on our Facebook, but you've got to use that code. Where is it? There we go. That code gift of data 50 as the referred by. So in the get started form at iPadRehab.com, get started, fill out the form and put referral referred by gift of data 50. And then you'll get that 50% off on your quote. As long as your device makes it here on Santa sleigh, it's gotta be postmarked by December 24th, Christmas Eve. All right, time for me to go. And I hope that you guys fix those devices when diode mode doesn't give you anything, that's not the end of the road. So keep, keep going, keep fixing.